so busy uh, with the project the boss gave you? No. Something is wrong with my payout account. I cannot log in. Oh. I go online shopping a lot. I'm a pay-all expert. Let me help you. Hiya. Just reset the password and sign in again. I've tried already. But I haven't received any email from pay-all regarding the new password reset. Maybe you need to wait a while before you get the email. You see, I've just received a notification that Payall deducted $1,488 from my credit card. But I didn't buy anything recently. Did you get hacked? I think you better call the bank and ask them to cancel the transaction first. There's this $1,488 charged from my payout account, but I didn't purchase anything for that amount. Is it possible that you bought some items by mistake or forgot about the purchase? No. I'm sure I didn't make a mistake, and I'm sure I wouldn't forget buying something so expensive. Then what happened? I've tried accessing my payout account, but it kept showing me a login error. Have you tried resetting the password to your payout account? That's the thing. I've tried resetting my password, but I never received any email from them. I even checked my spam folders. Nothing. I think my account has been deactivated. Is your pay or account still linked to your credit card? No. I've called the bank and luckily managed to get it to stop any credit card payments for purchases. Okay, Mr Yap. We will investigate and contact you if we need any further information. So, any updates on Mr Yap's case? It seems that his case is just the tip of the iceberg. The duty officer returns indicate that over the past few months, there's been an upward trend in cases involving the hacking of payout accounts. How many cases are we looking at? 18 such cases in the past two months. Mr Yaps is the latest in a series of cases with similar modus operandi. Without exception, the victims reported that their payout accounts had been used for unauthorised purchases and subsequently deactivated. Which suggests the involvement of the same hacker. Preliminary investigations show that the illegal purchases were generally fast-moving consumer goods acquired from e-commerce sites. Ilfran, get in touch with Payo and get their logs. Okay. Lawrence, get in touch with the e-retailers and see what other information they can provide about the transactions. After interviewing the e-retailers, I've managed to determine that in all the cases, the illegal purchases were delivered either to collection boxes or via courier services that did not require any form of identification from the recipients. So there's no physical addresses or names that we can trace. What about the pay-all transactions? Anything that can provide a lead? We have been able to ascertain that in some instances, the hacker was able to change the victim's login IDs to their pay-all accounts, make illegal purchases and then closing their accounts, all in less than five minutes. Seems like our hacker has some skills. Anything else? In each case, the hacker changed the victim's email address to a different email address. Eight of these email addresses are almost identical. In fact, only one digit separates them. All these email addresses have King Arthur in common. This seems to back our theory that it's the same hacker. Yes, and our investigations have led us to this HDB flat in Topayo. Great work, guys. So who lives there? The internet subscriber is a Mr. Ko Meng Lo, sales manager. He's got three children, Rachel, Raymond and Richmond. What about his wife? She passed away ten years ago. Lawrence, let's pay Mr. Ko a visit. Mendel, 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 I need assistance! I need assistance! Ah, I'm in, I'm in! Dad, you lie, I'm in the neighbors to complain. Hi! Are you Mr. Ko Ming Lo? Yes. Mr. Ko, I'm Senior Investigation Officer Engo. Would like to ask you a few questions? Okay, please come in. See that? You always play so loudly, now the police are here because the neighbors have complained. Hey, 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 ah, guys, sorry, I got a lot off now. Yeah, 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 you, you go ahead with the rapers, okay? I'm. I'm so sorry. I'm 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 just training for an esports tournament, and I know it's a bit noisy. Next time, I'll keep the volume down. 
we're not here for that. Although, you should be more considerate to your neighbours who might not appreciate the noise. We're here about some cases of payoff fraud. But I don't know anything about that. These cases of unauthorised payoff fraud were made in this residence. I only use my payoff for downloadable content for my games. Could someone else have tapped into internet access? I don't think so because my Wi-Fi password is made up of all random characters and uh, it's nearly impossible for anybody to guess what it is. Plus, my Wi-Fi network is invisible. You really have to know what you're looking for and to get access to it. What about your children? <laughs> my children, they don't really like computers. That's unusual. You know how children are. They hate everything that their parents like. If you don't mind, Mr. Cole, would you like to ask them a few questions? Oh, yeah, sure. We have nothing to hide. Do you know anything about unauthorised pay or transactions that originated from this address? No, and that is right. I don't like computers and I don't have a pay or account. So, you're Raymond? Yes. And you're Richmond? You guys know anything about unauthorised payoff transactions? Um, no. Do you guys have payoff accounts? No. Mr. Cole, we need to seize all your electronic devices in your home for forensic examinations. That includes your laptop, tablet, and mobile phones. <sighs> okay. Excuse me, man. What will happen if you find something? Why are you asking? What do you do wrong? You better tell the police what you did and don't get there into trouble. Um, actually, we don't have our own payall accounts, but we did buy some stuff online using payall. How? We use other people's payall accounts. sons individually with the counsellors from Children's Society. Don't worry, we just need your help in our investigation. It was all my idea, not Richmond's. He just did whatever I asked him to. So tell me, what happened? We were just trying to find songs to put into our phones. And we downloaded Ta. Why can't we have to install Ta? Why can't we just use Google Chrome or, or Firefox? Because Ta is better and we can access to Anilen after we've finished installing it. Anilen? It's also called Dark Web, but people online like to call it Anilen because all the web addresses there end with dot onion. We, we managed to find a lot of songs this week. Do you know that downloading songs like this is illegal? But everybody does it. That does not make it legal. I had a problem coming up, and I didn't have enough savings to buy cool outfits. Then, I found out that we could buy things online by using other people's payout accounts. How? Mm, from this website in Onion Land. It was run by this guy called Cyber Tiger. It had online tutorials which showed where we could buy payout accounts which belonged to other people and the owner's login details and how to use this personal information to gain access to owner's payout accounts and buy stuff for ourselves. Then, we were taught how to immediately change owner's email addresses and close down their payout accounts so that owners couldn't cancel the transactions we made. After that, it showed how to find a delivery service that didn't ask for any identification or home address. You're done? Me. So that we could get delivery in public place and use fake names. That way, nothing could be traced back to us. After it worked the first time, we started to buy other stuff and sold some of them online. 
And what do you do with the money you got from selling these illegal purchases? We saved it for university. Have you met Cyber Tiger? No, but once we got stuck and asked him for help using this messaging app called Telegram. How do you know how to contact Cyber Tiger? He put his Telegram account online in case people had any questions. So he helped you for free? Yes, but, but we felt bad. So after we made some money, we offered to pay him $500. Did he accept? Yes. How did you pay him? He gave us his friend's bank account number and we did a cash deposit at the ATM into the account. Do you still have the bank account number? No. Do you remember the date, time, location of the ATM where you deposited the money? Yes. Besides the Telegram account, do you have any other way to contact Cyber Tiger? No, only Telegram and his website. Okay, I need both from you. Alright. I've gone through Raymond's mobile phone. It's got Telegram installed, but all the messages between him and Cyber Tiger have been deleted and overwritten. We still have Cyber Tiger's website. I can try to do a DNS lookup from the URL. Okay, do that. Ufran, call the bank. Give them the details of the cash deposit and get the bank account holder's details. After that, both of you troll the internet and dark web. Go through forums, social medias, photos, videos and everything. See if you can detect any interest, activities or online presence similar to Cyber Tiger. You might be able to get a lead to his identity. This is Adam Bin Rashid, Cyber Tiger's friend. There was a cash deposit of $500, which matches the date, time, and ATM location that the two boys gave us. There were several other irregular cash deposits made into Adam's account. We've looked up both Cyber Tiger and Adam's online profiles. They appear to be different people with separate email addresses, usernames, and social media accounts. They appear to be different people? Yep. Initially, we thought that Adam might be a money mule for Cyber Tiger, until I investigated further and found this. Cyber Tiger purchased on Moo.sg a while back, using an old email address that he doesn't use on any of his other accounts. And it appears that Adam had an old email address that he recently cancelled. Guess what the email address was? It seems that Adam is most likely Cyber Tiger. He probably told the two boys that it was his friend's bank account, just to be safe. But we need to be careful when we arrest Adam come Cyber Tiger. Given the slightest opportunity, he could destroy all the evidence. What do you mean? CyberTiger bought a data destruction program that he can also trigger remotely from his mobile phone. This means that he can erase his hard disk of all evidence of any illicit activity with a single touch. But we can run his hard disk through our data recovery program and recover whatever evidence he thought he erased, right? Yes, but there's always a chance of data loss, so it's better to be safe. Mm. When we arrest him, we need to ensure that we minimise if not eliminate the risk. Ufran, gather the team. Recently, there's been a series of hacking incidents involving payor accounts which were used for unauthorised purchases. This is our suspect, Adam and Rashid, who also goes by the handle CyberTiger. During the course of our investigation, we discovered that Adam has access to a data destruction program via his mobile phone and laptop. So we need to arrest him outside his home when he's not holding on his mobile phone. Adam is currently staying at this block on the second floor. We'll be heading there tomorrow. Lawrence, you're with me. Ofran, you and John will be positioned at Void Deck. Jean and Kenny, you'll be going to the car park opposite his unit. Once you see a suspect exiting his home, inform me. Upon arresting a suspect, seize all his computer, laptop, tablets and all communication devices. OK, we'll be heading there tomorrow at 9am sharp.
I have visual on the suspect. He's leaving the unit now. Roger. Suspect's heading down. All units, get ready. Rashid, you're under arrest for unauthorized access to computer materials. Move on. Adam, is this your laptop? Seize it. Are you Cyber Tiger? Yeah. How do you know about the dark web? I read about it in an online article. So uh, I tried it out. I was surprised at how easy it was to buy other people's payout logins. Not all of them worked, but most of them did. So the first thing I bought was a mobile phone. I would change the owner's email address and close down the PL accounts after that. Nobody ever found out. At first, I was thinking of a way to withdraw money from the PL accounts. Then, I came up with a better idea. I would buy mobile phones and sell them for cash. That way, nobody would be able to trace it back to me. Then, I started writing tutorials online, teaching people how to make money like this. So quick and simple. Many people wrote in and thanked me. Then, when I realized that it was a young boy who contacted me, I felt bad. I didn't want to touch a kid who just needed the money. So you have never met the people you were teaching? No. It was always online. But a young boy offered to pay me. So I gave him my bank account number to deposit cash or fund transfer to. Muhammad Adam bin Muhammad Rashid was convicted of cheating, criminal breach of trust and offences under the Computer Misuse Act and sentenced to three years imprisonment. Raymond and Richmond were convicted of offences under the Computer Misuse Act and were both sentenced to 15 months probation. The dark web is a part of the World Wide Web that is only accessible via special softwares, allowing the users to remain anonymous. In the case you have just seen, the suspect made use of the anonymity of the dark web to commit crimes. To establish the identity of the suspect, determined and resourceful officers from the Criminal Investigation Department worked tirelessly around the clock and leveraged technology to crack through the web of anonymity. Muhammad Adam bin Muhammad Rashid was eventually arrested for his involvement in the first dark web-related case in Singapore, where he engaged in online crimes and abetted others to do so. Under the Computer Misuse Act, or CMA, it is an offence to use personal information obtained or believed to be obtained by an act in breach of the CMA to commit or to facilitate an offence. Examples of personal information include hacked credit card details or other information that could identify an individual. It is also an offence to obtain and deal in items which may be used to commit a CMA offence. Such items include hacking tools, password and computer programs that are designed or adapted to be used for committing the offence. A first-time offender could be fined up to $10,000 or jailed up to three years, or both. Repeat offenders could be fined up to $20,000 or jailed up to five years, or both. In 2017, the police received more than 5,300 cybercrime reports, which accounted for more than 16% of the overall crime that year. In the first six months of 2018, the police received more than 3,100 cybercrime reports, which accounted for more than 19% of the overall crime during this period. In this current digital age, 
making transactions online are becoming a way of life. Here are some ways you can protect yourself from becoming a cybercrime victim. Cyber criminals are always on the lookout for their next target. To avoid becoming a victim to cyber criminals, you need to be vigilant and take steps to secure your accounts. Do not use personal data such as your IC number or birth date in your passwords or user IDs. Passwords should be strong and unique. Use different passwords for different accounts and enable two-factor authentication or 2FA whenever it is available as an additional layer of security. Watch out for fraudulent transactions and suspicious requests for your personal data. If you suspect that your account may have been compromised, change your password immediately before reporting the incident. Organisations should also take steps to protect their systems and customers' personal data. Aside from enhancing the monitoring of their IT systems, they should strengthen their identity authentication processes and not rely solely on personal data as the only source of verification. For more cybersecurity information, viewers can refer to the SyncCert webpage at www.csa.gov.sg. Anyone with information on illegal or suspicious activities may call the police hotline at 1-800-255-0000. You can also submit the information online via eyewitness at www.police.gov.sg forward slash eyewitness or through our Police at SG application. We've come to the end of this episode of Crime Watch. If you have any feedback, do drop us an email. I'm DSP Jonathan Naoyong. Until next time, do your part to prevent, deter and detect crime. Mm-hmm.